Today was the uh, transfer of authority, signifying the transfer of mission command of the Patriot Forces here in theater. The 6th, 9th, 8th, 8th Brigade, my brigade, transferred authority over to the 108th, 8th Brigade out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. How do you think the unit performed during the deployment? Outstanding. Uh, the unit exceeded my expectations in every measurable area. From the time we arrived, uh, the unit really grasped the mission, understood what was uh, to happen here in theater, and it took it to the next level. When Sergeant Major and I flew around to see our soldiers, the joy of them accomplishing their mission, accomplishing their goals, was something that we felt that uh, the unit really took, took to heart and was important to them. What stood out about this deployment from your previous deployment? Uh, I think it was the uh, span of control that we had. Uh, we had uh, 11 Patriot batteries and one Tippy battery deployed across five different countries. Not to mention we had two battalions and a THAAD battery back in Fort Hood, Texas. So really having to provide mission command, provide guidance, provide leadership, to all those forces, approximately 3,400 across multiple locations was something that was different. I never had to do that before in any of my uh, command positions before. What was the brigade's mission and do you think the unit accomplished? Uh, our brigade's mission was to provide command and control for the Patriot forces here in theater. And without a shadow of a doubt, we accomplished our mission. Uh, we did things that were the first time ever deployed here. For example, we, had, we increased redundancy of communications out in lo remote locations that weren't here before. We had backup communication set up. We had backup power set up. This unit had the highest OR rate in four years in the AOR. So absolutely accomplished their mission and then some. How well do you, uh, do you think that the brigade performed in terms of readiness? Outstanding. As I just mentioned, 98% was the highest OR rate in four years. Also, the unit increased their combat proficiency. They, they ran different drills. They would exercise with their host nation partners, exercise with their Air Force partners. So I. I I agree that the unit increased its readiness across multiple areas, not just in, in uh, maintenance readiness, but also equipment readiness, also combat readiness, and just really partnering with our host nation, building their capacity. What, what were some of the brigade's uh, highlight uh, accomplishments that you would like to highlight? Oh, again, back to the number one, 98% OR rate, again, the highest in four years. Also, the, uh, the number of soldiers that we integrated into this theater. We transitioned six battalions during our time here. So we brought over six set of accomplishments, six, six sets of you know, soldiers coming in, bringing from, from different walks of life, from different brigades across the 30-second footprint. Bringing all those folks together was more like a symphony. Some people say it was a pickup game. I don't want to call it a pickup game. Pickup game implies that our soldiers were not a part of our team before. They were a part of our team back in CONUS. By bringing them together over here, it became more like a symphony. They brought their individual uh, unit techniques, individual unit pride, and all to form the top notch, the team of winners brigade that we were here. What's next for the 69th Brigade? Oh, great question. We're heading back to Fort Hood, Texas today, uh, and then we'll rejoin our teammates back there at Fort Hood while preparing 4580A, our next battalion to deploy over here in two weeks. We're going to go back, we're going to get with our families and enjoy the wins that we accomplished over here in theater. Joseph McCallion, Jr., Colonel and Brigade Commander. Actually, can you spell your name for me as well? Sure, it's uh, M-C-C-A-L-L-I-O-N. So what event took place today and what is the significance of it? Today we conducted the transfer of authority between my brigade and the 69th ADA. And the significance behind that is just to show the uh, managing transitions of uh, one unit to another while we still maintain the ability to conduct combat operations at a moment's notice. So uh, the 69th had gone through and conducted uh, this rotation for over nine months, continued to build their uh, combat readiness and uh, strengthen relationships with our partners and also establish better TTPs, refining sites, um, and, and also uh, the way to conduct business here. They handed that off to us, and now we will conduct this mission for the next nine months. Okay. So what did the 108th ADA Brigade do in preparation to deploy? So what we did in preparation for this deployment was extensive six-month period uh, starting last summer. We had uh, built the team, multiple staff exercises followed by uh, complete mission rehearsal exercise, which is an external evaluation, all on our ability to conduct not only the steady state operations that we're doing right now, but quickly transition a combat operation and be able to execute lethal 
uh, air missile defense engagement operations with, uh, with our partners. Uh, what are your goals for the brigade during this deployment? Our goals, of course, is a uh, big thing is for us to build, uh, sustain, and demonstrate our combat readiness. We do this with multiple internal exercises, also external evaluations, and then working with our joint partners through what we call joint kill chain exercises. We're also able to demonstrate our combat readiness with our partners in other countries that also have air and missile defense uh, capabilities that we're able to integrate in there. So that's our big thing, is just to continue to uh, be ready at a moment's notice uh, to conduct uh, lethal air missile defense operations. Our other goals, of course, is to uh, strengthen and cultivate the relationships, not only with our joint partners, but also with our host nation um, partners, uh, allies, uh, and every, every time we do that, we strengthen those relationships. It just gets us better at doing what we're doing, but it also allows us to hand off a, uh, a better product to, to who is going to replace us. And then finally, the big thing is, is managing transitions. As we'll be here, we will change out certain units. Other units will come in. I know that our joint partners also rotate other units. And so the key thing is, is having a seamless transition so there is no gaps in capability during, during our time here. What does the 108th ADA Brigade bring to the fight here? Uh, we bring highly trained uh, operators, mission uh, command uh, cell that's able to, uh, to do the steady state operations right now, but also do force operations and engagement operations. Uh, we, our brigade staff has been well trained over the last six months, and uh, we bring not only our, our um, command and control capabilities, but also uh, um, a level of expertise that is able to evaluate and to um, challenge our subordinate units and uh, get an assessment on where they're at with combat readiness. Okay. And how well do you think the transition between the 69th ADA and the 108th ADA went? It was a phenomenal transition. I, I just uh, I can't hand it off better to the uh, Lightning Brigade. They did a fantastic job. And uh, in today's world with technology, uh, it, was, it was pretty much, it, it facilitated a seamless transition. And what I'm saying is, is that over the last six months, the reports, the daily briefings, the status of equipment that was happening here in the 69th was able to be emailed back to us. And our staff was able to review in real time the same issues, um, the same briefings, that were going on here. So we, we had an opportunity to kind of peer into the issues that were going on with 69th. And therefore, when we came in, it wasn't like a cold start. We had already established those relationships with uh, their staff. And therefore, getting on the ground these last couple of weeks, it was just really that uh, left seat, right seat ride and an easy transition. OK. And uh, the last question, sir, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, just that. We understand, it's not lost on us, the significance of our mission here. Um, this has been going on for years. This is a steady state rotation. However, if you look at what's going on in the world, a lot of ballistic missile activity uh, that's, that's increasing the instability in the region. So therefore, um, we're ready to, um, to transition a war. We're ready to protect these operational centers of gravity. We have the lethal hit-to-kill hypersonic interceptors. We're ready to do the air and missile defense operations. But I just want to say that, you know, with what's going on in the world, um, I think it's heightened our uh, alert state. It's heightened our, um, our readiness that we know that we may possibly have to transition and, and execute those, those operations.
transfer of authority ceremony between these two great organizations. The 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade, commanded by Colonel Richard A. Harrison, will transfer authority to the 108th Air Defense Artillery, commanded by Colonel Joseph McCallion, Jr., signifying the successful completion of the 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade's mission and the start of the 108th Air Defense Artillery Brigade's mission in support of Spartan Shield. The host for today's ceremony is the 29th Infantry Division Commander, Major General Blake Ordner. Present. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the United States National Anthem and remain standing. share a common bond as members of the profession of arms. They are called to serve and defend our great nation. Thank you for their unwavering dedication. We also thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed on the 69th Top Notch Brigade, commanded by Colonel Harrison and Command Sergeant. We know the future of our nation and of this region have been made safer and fortified by their vigilance and desire for excellence. May their homecoming be joyful and filled with your utmost grace. We ask your hand of protection and the blessings on Colonel McCallion and Command Sergeant Major Adams and every 108th Brigade soldier. Guide them in their efforts as they accomplish the duties in which they are called. Watch over their families at home and in their absence. Give them their peace that surpasses all understanding. We offer this prayer in your great name. Amen. We'll move forward to case the Brigade colors. Signifying, although reorganizing many times throughout its history, the 69th Brigade's longest affiliation began with its designation on 1 April 1960 as Headquarters and Headquarters Battery, 69th Artillery Groups. At the time, the 69th was assigned as one of four artillery groups under the operational command of the 32nd Air Defense Brigade, providing integrated air defense for the Central European region. This association and mission continued unbroken for 31 years. In 1989, the 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade in conjunction with elements of the 32nd Army Air and Missile Defense Command, deployed a task force of over 1,000 soldiers to Southwest Asia in support of Operation Desert Shield Desert Storm. As a dedicated high and medium altitude air defense asset to the 7th U.S. Army Corps, the Task Force 843 fielded four Patriot firing batteries and two Hawk batteries. The task force provided critical protection to 7th Corps, providing integrated coverage against both hostile aircraft and ballistic <laughs> missiles. The 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade, Guarding the Skies, relocated from its headquarters located at Wurzburg, Germany, in the summer of 2008. The brigade officially encased its colors at Fort Hood, Texas, on 16 September 2008. The unit participated in World War II as the 108 Anti-Aircraft Artillery Group in Normandy, <coughs> Northern France, Rhineland, and Central Europe. After being inactivated and reactivated across Los Angeles, California, and Fort Riley, Kansas, the group was deployed to the Republic of Vietnam in October 1967, where they participated in every major operation conducted in Northern Court and received credit for 11 different campaigns in Vietnam. The group was decorated with the Vietnam Cross of Gallery of Reform. Once again, inactivated in Vietnam and reactivated in Germany, the group was redesignated as the 108th Air Defense Artillery Brigade on October 1, 1982. Once relocated to Fort Bliss, Texas, the brigade deployed to OIF while the subordinate battalions deployed to OIF and OEF in support of the global war on terror and to Korea to perform air and missile defense and non-standard operations. On June 28, 2007, 108th Air Defense Artillery Brigade relocated again to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Since relocating to Fort Bragg, the brigade headquarters have deployed four times in support of OEF.
Major General Severo, General Officers, Officers, Sergeant Majors, NCOs, Soldiers, Friends of the 69th and the 108th Air Defense Artillery Brigade. It is my distinct honor to be here today to oversee this transition of authority ceremony. As I've told Colonel Harrison and many others, this is a very unique opportunity for a division commander because division commanders do not get to command ADA brigades. And I must say, I could have not asked for a better team than the 69th ADA to be my first ADA brigade. But maybe this should not be such a surprise, and perhaps it is fitting, as we experience the changing environment of warfare we will face in the future, where the air defense artillery will once again become one of the most valuable weapon systems on the battlefield. With the increased threat of sophisticated and highly lethal fifth generation aircraft and highly advanced ballistic missile systems being fielded to our adversaries and our potential adversaries, air defense as well as missile defense will once again find an absolutely critical place on the battlefield not seen in 30 years. And to you, <clears throat> and you are the leaders of this change. You will be the new commanders, NCOs, and trained soldiers that will face this threat. And it is also very rewarding to be here in Qatar, because in the future, as it has been the case for the last 25 years, we will not fight these wars alone, but with our allies, partners, and friends. We will depend upon them as we should. With the proliferation of TBM systems and sophisticated, sophisticated aircraft, we cannot afford to fight on our own. No nation can. And perhaps more than ever, we must have our friends and allies with us to cover the vast sky for threats and for that matter, space as well. As I stated in December at my own TOA ceremony, Colonel McCullion, I want you your staff and your soldiers to know the division headquarters is here to support you. You are the focus of Spartan Shield. It is absolutely imperative that the division help you build the readiness of your units, not only for today's fight, but for the fights to come, because they will be coming. And you must do this with our allies and partners to build capacity, understanding, interoperability, and trust, as this is critical to any future fight. We must all be ready to fight together, and we must be able to operate seamlessly with each other. Readiness is and always will be the key to success in our business. It will always be the priority. Readiness in all areas of equipment, personnel, maintenance, medical, as well as physical and mental readiness and personal readiness as well. As I have often said, it is most units' operational readiness is measured in days. The Patriot units are measured in hours. And while your use may be a low probability, if you are used, it will be extremely high risk and will signal a <coughs> carry in those warheads and the difficulty being able to engage them makes you potentially the most important soldiers on the battlefield. You provide more protection capability than an easily carried chemical weapon makes you can not and the soldiers of 6988. You fulfill all the aspects need to react to any mission or process, whether the SANS remote launcher mission to support our MRID partners, the in-theater crew immersion training, the counter UAS exercise in Jordan, or your improvements to the missile retrograde program have set a high standard and challenged the 108 to improve upon. And your soldiers have demonstrated excellence and professionalism at every turn. You conducted your operations over multiple countries and quickly adapted to widely distributed operations, a required task that will only become you have been and will continue to be critical to protecting U.S. forces, allies, 
and partners well into the future. Because even as we feel newer and better missiles, directed energy weapons, and who knows what, it will always be the soldiers who make the difference. It was this way in 1776, and it will always be so. The American soldier will always make the difference, whether with a patriot or Thad or with a rock. I have been very proud to be your division commander. Colonel Harrison, you and your soldiers have succeeded in every effort and every task. Your action in World War II was outstanding. In creation, conducted in I Corps area of operation, 11 different campaigns while in Vietnam, and being awarded the Vietnam <coughs> Cross of Gallantry with Palm. Germany, the Cold War, the Gulf. You will continue your ADA legacy as you follow the 69th. I know you will do well and perform deeds above words. To both the 69th. Great today because uh, we got a plan ready for us, do we? <laughs> and I saw Joe's cake is a nice looking cake. Although I drew six and nine in there with my finger. <laughs> Uh, General Ordner, General Officers, Fellow Commanders, Command Sergeant Majors, Command Chiefs, other distinguished guests, soldiers, <coughs> Assistant Service teammates, welcome to today's Transport Majority Ceremony, and thank you all for attending today. Today marks the peaceful transfer of U.S. CENTCOM Air Defense Mission from 6th 88th Brigade to the 108th 88th Brigade, the Spark Brigade. I'd like, be like to begin today by thanking those who helped to make this ceremony a memorable day. So please join me in a round of applause, those folks who took, took part in our ceremony today. <laughs> Next, I want to thank our Army teammates, both for RCEN, the 29th, and other enablers out there, our Air Force. <laughs> now, the Top Notch mission is a unique mission uh, comprised of 11 Patriot batteries and one TB2 radar deployed across five countries. Now, I was told when I was here that the Top Notch mission is kind of like a pickup game. I took offense to that uh, because <coughs> pickup game implies that we're not part of a team. In fact, we are part of a team. We're part of the 32nd team back at back at Fort Bliss and Conus, and we come over here with our own skill sets, our own pride, our own hustle, our own desire. Uh, so I think of us as a symphony, uh, and the symphony knows the winds bring their own theme, their own sounds to the symphony, the horns bring their own sounds to the symphony, the brass section brings their own sounds to the symphony, and I believe that when the Top Notch Mission comes together, it's like a symphony. It's all of us coming together, bringing our own individual training, our own pride, our own hustle, desire, our own standards from our installations, and coming together and playing beautiful music. The Top Notch Command Team and the Top Notch Headquarters just has to be the conductor for that symphony. Each battalion comes over here with his own music, sheet music, that he have to play to our music for us to win. And that's what happened during over, here, over this time. We actually won. We all played on the same sheet music, and it was beautiful. So I'm proud of each and one of you for coming over and playing our sheet music. Now it's time to turn the page and play the 108 sheet music. And I'm confident this team is gonna play beautiful music after today. Now, I told my team coming over, it was sort of a theme that we had. One of my favorite movies growing up was Smokey and the Bandit. I know some of you watched them. I see the smiles and the head nods. But Jerry Reed wrote a song, theme song for that movie. And one of the, the citizens of that song said, we're gonna do what they say can't be done. And I tell you teammates, we did what they say couldn't be done. We came over here as a team and we achieved the impossible. Like General Wharton mentioned, the Sasanaka mission was not a mission that was kind of stuff we trained for, not a mission that we've already you know, prepared for, but we made it happen. Backup commercial power is something that we didn't have over here initially. We have that now. A jump top, a place for us to go in the event something happens to our main headquarters. We have that now. Redundancy and communications across 11 PAT sites. We have that now because of the great work that you did. You did what they say couldn't be done. So today, again, I honor you for that, and I thank you for that. To Joe, Commander Sergeant Major Adams, what an amazing deployment you're gonna have. I wish you guys the best of luck with your entire team. We're tremendously proud of you. Couldn't ask for a better teammate to hand off this mission to. I know that you can take it to the next level. To the battalion commands and CSMs that are here, thank you for your support. Uh, you truly are a team of professionals. You make the team of winners win every day. And to all of our soldiers out there, Sergeant Major Brown and I could not be more proud of you. We are going back home as winners because of you. In closing, thank you all for attending today's ceremony. Team of winners, guard the skies, army strong. <laughs> Major General Ortner, 
General Officers, Command Sergeant Major, Command Chiefs, distinguished guests. Thank you for taking the time to be here this morning and witness this transfer of authority. First and foremost, a heartfelt and sincere thanks to Colonel Rich Harrison and the Lightning Brigade. What a tremendous reception and transition we had over the last couple of weeks. What you've done over the last nine months has is, is been fantastic and you've really set the bar high for us to achieve. Um, Rich, you have truly demonstrated <coughs> what you have here it is a team of winners. Safe travels back to Fort Hood. General Ordner, the Spartan Brigade is trained and ready for this mission. It is not lost on us, the contemporary operating environment we're dealing with and the recent missile activity that continues to bring instability to this region. We, we are trained to conduct lethal air missile defense engagement operations <coughs> across multiple countries with fire units that are tactically in place, protecting operational centers of gravity with strategic implications. Our number one focus is combat readiness. We will continue to fill, maintain, sustain, and demonstrate combat readiness. Additionally, we will continue to cultivate and strengthen <coughs> our relationships with our joint and host station partners and seamlessly manage transitions as we integrate individuals, leaders, units, and follow-on forces, all with the goal of enhancing combat readiness. We are ready for the moment of truth. Deeds above words, swift and sure, Army Strong, Spartan, correction, top notch six, signing off.